Joining us via Skype is legendary investor Jim Rogers. He is the chairman and CEO of Rogers Holdings, the creator of the Rogers International Commodities Index, and the co-founder of the Quantum Fund. And Jim, thanks so much for being with us today. Likewise. You have said the Federal Reserve is going to keep printing money, and the Fed recently announced plans to do just that, announcing an open-ended round of quantitative easing. Are commodities due for an open-ended rally? Well, uh, yes, uh, yes, uh, yes, I know. I mean, if something suddenly happens, if, if Spain goes bankrupt out of the blue, everything's going to go down for a while, and there will be consolidations along the way. But yes, they're going to print more money. Kathleen, either the world economy is going to get better and commodities are going to go up because of shortages, or they're going to print more money. And throughout history, when they printed a lot of money, you protect yourself by owning real assets. Other central banks are taking steps to jolt their economies. Is the Fed the main driver, or will moves from the European Central Bank, the People's Bank of China, and the Bank of Japan, uh, will, will moves from those banks move markets as well? Well, fortunately or unfortunately, the Federal Reserve, with America, is the largest economy in the world, so they are the most influential and have the most effect. But you're exactly right. <coughs> the central bank in Europe is getting in the party. Everybody's in the party. The Chinese are not quite so much in the party as they as they were before, but the, the three big central banks, the Japanese, the Europeans, and the Americans, are all in the game. Let's look Many. at softs, grains, and other agricultural commodities. Will monetary policy be a driving force behind them, or will more underlying factors, such as a shortage of farmers or shifts in demand, play a role? Well, all, with all commodities, the most important uh, factor is supply and demand. And with agricultural products, we have inventories near historic lows because we've been consuming more than we've been producing for a decade now. We do have shortages of farmers developing. We have shortages of everything. So the main driver is going to be supply and demand, Kathleen. But if they also print money, that's just going to be icing on the cake to make uh, agricultural commodities go up even more. You have said you don't like the dollar, but you own it. Is that still the case? And can you recommend any other currencies for better or worse? Well, I do own the U.S. dollar. Uh, for a variety of reasons, mainly because everybody's in a, in a, in a tizzy about what to do with that money, including me. Uh, and they, Well, the renminbi, I, I always buy the renminbi when I can. You can't just pick up the phone, Kathleen, and buy a lot of renminbi. You have to do it, you know, when circumstances uh, allow. Uh, there's nothing else that I would think of. Well, if you want to buy the euro, you could buy the Swiss franc because they're tied together right now. I'm, I'm not buying either, but Someday that's going to break, and then the Swiss franc will go up a lot. Likewise, if you want to buy the U.S. dollar, you could buy the Hong Kong dollar because they too are tied together, and the Hong Kong dollar is going to break free someday. So, I mean, these aren't these aren't imminent trades by any stretch of the imagination. But if there are people interested in buying the Swiss franc uh, or the euro, the best ways to buy the Swiss franc, and likewise for the dollar. I am looking at Russia for the first time in my life contemplating buying Russia. I'm even looking at the ruble. I have no idea what will I will do. I may not do anything. But the ruble is probably the, the, the newest kid on my block. Why Although you, I'm not... Jim, why are you looking at Russia and the ruble? Well, first of all, Russia has a freely convertible currency, despite what people may think. Secondly, uh, you know, the Russians have been playing the, the wrong game for 95 years now. They kept promising, you put your money into Russia and everything will be okay, and we'll protect you. But then, of course, they take it away from you or, or whatever. Uh, Mr. Putin seems to be changing uh, his attitude towards outside investors and towards inside investors, for that matter. He seems to be understanding that you can't just take money away from people. You can't just throw people in jail. He seems to be changing. And if that's the case, which it look, I, I'm convinced it is, there are going to be could be great opportunities in Russia. I mean, staggeringly big company, a country, lots of assets. It could be a great, great story. Everybody's negative on it. I've been negative on it for 95 years. So, uh, well, I'm not quite 95 years. I'm not that old, but I've certainly been negative on it all my life. So it's I'm I'm taking a look. What about stocks? Are stocks poised for gains? Uh, not with my money. I, I don't think so. I would, Kathleen, we've had a big rally since the last several months in anticipation of QE3 coming. Well, QE3 is now here. And normally what the market does, it rallies in anticipation of news, good news, 
Then when the good news comes, it does something else. So I, I would suspect that we, we're not going to have much strength for a while. Now, gold has risen for over a decade and has cooled its gains. Is the correction over? Well, I own gold. Uh, you're asking good, good questions. You're making me have to think, I can think harder because I, I haven't quite solved this thing in my own mind yet. I own gold. I'm not selling it. I'm not thinking about selling it. And so the problem is, Kathleen, in the last uh, few weeks, huge amounts of speculation have jumped into gold and silver. That's why they've gone up here. But I don't like to see that. I, I, I like to see people pessimistic, uh, pessimistic about gold and silver. So I'm not... I'm not sure the correction's over yet because there's an awful lot of bullishness. A lot of hedge funds, a lot of speculators have jumped into gold and silver in the last few weeks. I, I, I'm not jumping in with them. Jim, you've said we're going to play a horrible price for our monetary and fiscal policies in two years. What will that price look like? I don't know if it's two years, but normally there's a two-year lag for this sort of thing. There's already inflation in the land, Kathleen. Is, I'm, I'm sure you do your... Or you're shopping, so you know that there's that prices are going up for just about everything, whether it's entertainment or insurance or education, health care. Prices are going up for everything, despite what the U.S. government says. So we're already paying the price, and that price is going. We're going to have more inflation. Prices are going to go higher and higher. We're going to have increased interest rates down the road. We're going to have more turmoil in the currency markets. This is not going to be fun. What about the U.S. presidential election? How should investors play the election, if at all? They should ignore it. I mean, it looks like Mr. Obama will win the election, but even if he doesn't, I mean, there's not much difference in the two, Kathleen. It's not going to change. It'll change. Mr. Obama's friends will do well if he wins. Mr. Uh, whatever, Romney's friends will do well if he wins. But other than that, it's not going to change much of anything. They're pretty much the same guys. How worried are you about the fast approaching fiscal cliff and do you have any confidence in Washington that lawmakers will be able to avert the cliff? Kathleen, I don't have any confidence in Washington that they'll do anything right. I wish they'd all go to the, you know, go to the pub and drink all night and leave the rest of us alone. I would even buy the beer if they would do that. Now, I suspect something will happen because they're going to wake up to the fact that this could be a serious problem for, for all of us. I'm sure there'll be another temporary stopgap measure that will come into play. Oh, we just go from one stopgap measure to another, Kathleen. Nobody's dealing with the fundamental problems in the U.S. Last question, Jim. Let's talk about hidden opportunities during pullbacks. Gold, oil, stocks, the dollar have all advanced and retreated in the recent past. Do you see an asset class ready to pull back and unveil attractive buying opportunities in the process? Uh, no, not not an asset class so much. I mean, I've mentioned Russia. Russia's, Russia has pulled back, and if one decides to, to invest in Russia, one could go ahead and do it now. I have not because I just haven't gotten around to it enough. One could invest in Myanmar if you can find ways. I would invest in Myanmar today or North Korea. I would invest in North Korea today if I could find ways to do it. It's not that easy, so don't, don't rush out and start trying to buy North Korea. Um, these are some places I would buy today uh, if, I, if I continue. I mean, Russia is the one that I just haven't done enough work yet. But I would buy it today the way I think right now. Jim Rogers, always a pleasure speaking with you. Thanks for being with us today. My pleasure, Kathleen. I look forward to seeing you again. And thank you for watching Money News.